Praise be to God. How is everybody today? Tamara, what are you doing just sitting down there, girl? Get up here. Get on up here. This is Sister Tamara. She is Haitian-born. She loves her nation. And because of her love for her nation, we are able to allow God to use us to do some miracles, some amazing things. Just to back drop on what Josh was saying, years ago, uh, Pastor Cord Cordo had healed me. The Lord used him to heal me um, years ago when he was over there on, on, on 32. And, uh, yeah, so if you do, we got to believe in it. See, a lot of times we don't understand what Jesus said about faith. When he said, your faith has made you whole. Our faith in believing in God, all right, should surpass everything else. That's why we don't see it regularly because we truly don't believe. And Jesus challenged his disciples, you know, and even this evil and perverse generation, how long I'm going to be with you until you believe that I am the one. I came to heal you. I came to set you free, okay? So your faith level has to go up to that, yes, I'm going to be healed, and I was a product of that. So please, come out. Bring your friends. Bring your family, okay? We're not trying to be this big church that just does it because it's the body of Christ. And what happens is once you become the healer, once you get healed, you become the healer. Okay, I was delivered from drugs, cocaine, and all that. Once I became delivered, now I am now a deliverer. When I lay hands on people, boom. They become delivered, all right? That's what this thing is all about. The Genesis principle is about reproducing after your own kind. Whatever God did for you, you could do for somebody else. And that's for everybody. You are part of the greater works. That's how Jesus does it. And he does it with each and every one of us in our special giftings and anointings and, you know, and everything that we, you know, and that we do. So please, come out, bring your friends, bring your family, all right? God will do amazing things. But come with an expectation, a lot of times we come to church and we don't expect nothing. You got to come with an expectation that God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do according to this word. This is what we live by. Amen? This is what we live by. And, uh, you know, I, I meant to say it after the first time when Carrie sang that song that uh, we have to understand that Ephesians 4, 23 and 24, it says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which was created to, according to God in true righteousness and holiness. When you put on the Lord Jesus Christ, you got to renew your mind. It doesn't matter what you did before when you said yes to Jesus. The blood of Jesus has cleansed you, made you whole, brand new person. Paul said, if anybody be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. And listen, all things have become new. But we have to understand the holiness of God. God separated from sin, evil, and anything else that's contrary to what this word says about it. And so are you. That's why you got to renew your mind. I'm not that old person I used to be. This is who I am. I have been created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. That's your identification. You got to learn to identify what God says about you and not what man says about you. Amen? Because once you identify with what God is saying about you, that's when your life is going to change. That's when you stop trying, okay? to fight that sin nature because you understand that's not who I am. So I ain't even got to mess with you because that's not who I am. This is who I am. This is what I've been created to be from the very beginning until the enemy got in there and we yielded to him. When Adam said yes, all of us got that yes to temptation, sin, and whatever. But thanks be to God that we are righteous now in him. Amen? You come on, say, say, I am the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus our Lord. And just keep saying it until you start believing it. See, faith comes by hearing, and hearing only by the word of God. So if you have the faith to believe that you are the righteousness and holiness of God, then you need to keep saying it until you hear it and that thing hits. And then you're going to say, you know what? I am the righteousness of God. That's what faith is all about. That's why he said faith comes by hearing. You know, sometimes you don't get it the first shot out. That's why you got to keep meditating. You got to keep saying it. You got to keep saying it. By his stripes, I am healed. You still might have a pain in your leg, but by his stripes, I am healed. And sooner or later, you're going to be, can't touch it. Yeah. All right. Well, this is Sister Tamara, who I had the pleasure to go to Haiti and travel for eight, eight days with this woman. She's an amazing, amazing woman of God. Please get to know her. She's very quiet until she gets on the mission field. And like I said, she has a little Maria in her. <laughs> That's a private joke between me and Elaine. Okay. <laughs> 
But uh, she's an amazing woman. Her heart for Haiti, her heart for her people, uh, and she comes from a lineage of a family of believers in the midst of extreme poverty and everything else. Her great-great-grandmother, who she, you know, told me the story that she had a radio and that you couldn't touch that radio. It was on a Christian station. Her grandma would take you behind the woodshed and put something, a little act right on you, you know? And uh, so she told me about the legacy, but, you know, thinking about that legacy, I remember when Paul told Timothy, he said, what well, was in your grandmother Eunice, I mean, your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, it's in you. You know, if you come from a godly heritage, you got to understand that's in you. Sometimes we say, well, I can't be like my grandma. I can't be. Yes, you can, because it's in there. It's like Prego, you know, the spaghetti. It's in there. Spaghetti sauce, it's in there. We just have to activate it, all right? And it comes to the word, but she's an amazing woman, you know, of God and loves her country. And I was so blessed to be part of this mission. It's the first time I've ever been to Haiti. And, it, you know, it's funny. And God was orchestrating this thing from the whole time. I'm in the airport and I'm sitting, our plane is delayed. So I'm sitting there with this Haitian lady and she's like, ah, thirsty. So I said, okay, I got up and got some water, got her a bottle of water. So we're talking. She's from Connecticut. And she said, where are you going to Haiti? I said, this is my first time. She's like, this is your first time in Haiti? He said, you know, stuff jumps off over there. I was like, yeah, but I got, thinking of Tamara, yeah, I got my sister over there. I ain't with her. So we kept on talking, and she's writing, all right? She's writing. I don't know what she's doing, so we're just talking. And then she goes, here. She hands me a paper with a phone number on it. She said, I'm going to be there the Thursday. If something jumps off, you call this number. <laughs> and I'm saying, I'm saying, okay. <laughs> That's before I even got on the plane. And, uh, but... I let her speak first, and, you know, it was just an amazing trip, and, you know, God, you know, trust God. If I could say anything, please, trust God for it all. Trust God with everything. While sometimes God is crazy, you know, sometimes anybody ever said, this is crazy, and then you say, this can't be God, because this is crazy. God's crazy, okay? God will cause you to do crazy things that you ain't got the money, the ability, or nothing to do. Because that's who he is, right? He calls a poor man rich. He calls a weak man strong, all right? God's whole makeup is totally different from ours, all right? Because we want to see it first before we, you know, move into what we know that we heard God say for you, you know? We're like kids. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? <laughs> but God's saying, yeah, you're there. Just take the next step. Trust me. Take the next step. So it's been an amazing trip with this woman. Like I said, please get to know her. Please get to hear her heart. Please, you know, get to, you know, hear, hear what she has to say that, you know, how as we go forward as a church. And, you know, because I'm a, you know, I know a lot of people because I grew up in Kingston and I've been here 63 years. I know a lot of people. I'm going to drag a whole bunch of other people into this as well because many hands makes the work lighter. We are the body of Christ. You understand? We need each other. I don't care if you're Baptist. And all that stuff means nothing to me. Do you know Jesus and are you saved? And do you understand what the Great Commission says? That's all I care about. We might be doctrinally different or whatever. That's fine. All right? You want to stay in that corner, stay in the corner, but we going. All right? Because that's what the body is all about, and we connected with that body over there. So now, you know, because... Like he says here in Ephesians 4, he says that, you know, uh, Paul is talking to the church in Ephesus, he says, and speaking of Jesus, he himself gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, some to be pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. I don't care what church you go to, God did not call you just to sit on your blessed assurance. Okay, there's work to do. And there's part of the work, and you being part of the body, because there's things in your body that you don't see that's keeping you alive. All right? We so focus so much on the outside, how cute we think we is or whatever. All right? But you got a whole bunch of stuff going on inside of you that's keeping you alive. And that's what Paul is trying to make the church see, that the body of Christ, there's so much in there that makes you work. He said, for the work of uh, of, of ministry and for edifying the body, which means lifting up the body of Christ. Edify means to lift. Our job is to lift. And he says, until we all come into the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God, to the perfect man, to the measure of the, full, uh, of the stature of the fullness of Christ. It takes each and every one of us to get us to the fullness of who Jesus Christ really is in our lives. I need you. You need me. You push me. I push you. All right? In a loving way. 
Not that praise the Lord, I hate you, you know, okay? No, that's not what he's talking about. Is that we just push each other to the fullness, that we should no longer be children. The point that you have to grow up, like Paul said, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I acted like a child, but when I became a man, I put childish things away. Okay? We got to put them things away. All right, no longer tossed to being children, tossed to and fro, carried away by every doctrine and the trickery of none, men, in the cunning craftiness and deceitful and plotting. But speak the truth in love. All right, if you're going to speak to somebody about their attitude or something else, do it in love because that's what you would want. All right, and you need people around you to let you know when your butt is showing. All right, because that's what makes you grow. That's right, all right? Speaking the truth and love that we may grow up into all things, who is the head, Christ. As we grow up, we're growing up more to look, act, and talk just like Jesus. But we need people to lift us up for that, all right? We need people to come along the side of us. And then he says, from whom the whole body is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which Every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. We just had an amazing trip where we caused the body, part of the body to come together. The part of King's Fire, the part of the Haiti uh, uh, pastors and everything else to come together. We're connecting to body together. We need each other. The reason why the enemy wins, because we're all separated. But we're all going through the same thing. We're, we're stronger together than we are apart. You understand that? We might worship different. We might praise different. We might do all that different stuff. That's true. But we need each other to be a body. All right? Just think how, how, how you're trying to run or something, you throw your leg over there or something. You're not going to be too effective. Why? Because your leg's over there. You're like the scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz, over here, over there. All right, until all of us are put together, we're never going to impact the world the way Christ wants to, and we're never going to allow the, the, the gifts of the ministry we're talking about to flow through us because the Bible says that, um, uh, blah, 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 Psalms 133, how good and pleasant it is when men dwell together in unity. Then it goes on to say, that's where God commands the blessing. God commands the blessing when there's unity. And a lot of people wonder why, why I'm not blessed. Well, you're not in unity with nobody. You're not even in unity with your husband or your wife. Your kids are nothing. So why should you expect a blessing when the word clearly tells us that when it, you know, how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together. Amen? All right, so enough of me. Okay? Come on, say Go ahead, say what you want to say. Good morning. Um, it is with great joy that I'm here today. I thank God for taking us to Haiti and bringing us back safely. Uh, my name is Tamara, as Pastor Don said, Eliza. <laughs> no. <laughs> so um, I'm not a loudspeaker, and um, as Pastor Don says, I usually sit in the back. I'm very quiet, but once I open my mouth, I guess. <laughs> but um yeah we had a a wonderful time i'd say beyond wonderful time in haiti for um the little time we were there it was so much work that was done and each day that we did something well not us god did something and we thought wow what, that was an awesome day and you know he had something even greater the next day for us to do and um that was amazing, the way um, the mission impacted the lives over there in Haiti. First of all, we want to thank you all who helped us, whether it was through prayer, whether it was donations. However, we couldn't have done it without you. So we want to thank you, and we want you to give yourselves a round of applause because you deserve it. So... Um, the work, the people in Haiti, um, they are very hungry, not hungry. Well, they are hungry for physical stuff, food, but they are more hungry for the word. Uh, we were able to minister to 
a, a group of pastors that we had a conference with. And what just blew me away was the young people there. We were just expecting older people, but the young people there and how hungry they were to learn the word of God. And they were asking us to come back. Not only to come back, they wanted us to bring materials in Creole so they can have to take with them to teach others. And God allowed us to visit, it, um, to visit three prisons. Um, we were able to speak the word of God in those prisons, although there were some obstacles. But, you know, we had um, a spirit of uh, overcoming and God just made everything happen, opened all the doors, and we were able to share God's love, the message with these prisoners. And we had a few prisoners that gave their lives to Christ. Yes. And I remember, um, I'm not putting somebody here on the spot, but I was so surprised this morning to see her there, and the, I was talking to her the whole way through this whole project. I didn't think it was going to be this big when the thought came to my mind to just bring some hygiene supplies and, you know, like little things for the prisoners in Haiti because nobody's thinking about them. But I didn't think that was the level that God wanted to go with us. And I remember my sister who's here, she said to me, listen, there is somebody in that prison that God wants you to go to. And I, I didn't know what she meant. But when we got to one of the prisons, there was one lady. She came to me and said, sister, I've accepted Jesus Christ, but I have not yet baptized. I've asked people to do that for us, for me, but I haven't been able to find someone to do it. Would you be able to baptize me today? So I went, ran to Pastor Don. At first, we were in there cooking the food, and it was like a whole day. So he, when I came, I was like, are you done? I said, oh, no, no, no. We got more work to do. So, so I went to the chief, and he was very humble, very receptive to the whole idea. And he said, there's just one obstacle. I don't have water. I don't have a basin. I said, listen, if we get water, we don't need a basin. We get water, we're going to baptize her. And that's exactly what the Lord did. And we give him all the honor, all the glory for everything that happened. Because if it wasn't for him, none of it could happen. And, you know, it was wonderful how the children, we had discipleship with the children. Um, we were able to serve over 700 people. Um, the prisons, we went to a homeless shelter also. The children, we serve them. We serve them with backpacks and school supplies, about 50 of them. We serve them. So it was a, um, a big mission in such little time to see how much we can do in that little time. So imagine how much more we can do. And I'm going to share my dream again because <laughs> I have a lot of those. But um, before Pastor Don joined me, because I went ahead of him, before Pastor Don joined me, the night he was coming, I had this dream that um, we were in the hotel, and then there was this mudslide that was coming down. And I saw myself praying, Pastor Don praying, and my other partner praying. But I saw Pastor Don taking, he was wearing a, a hard hat. He took the hard hat off with his Bible and a chain in his hand, he wrapped everything up and just dig it in the ground. And he dug it there with the thought that the next generation that would come would find those items there. So when we went to the prison, after we ministered to the women, the next thing they asked us was for Bibles. When we did the conference, after we did everything, the pastors were asking us for Bibles. So then I, it clicked, was like, oh, that's what it meant. So we have to plant that seed there. We have to um, not only tell them about Jesus, but we have to equip them so they know they can keep growing with the word. Because without the word, they cannot grow. We can keep telling them, but they also need materials to keep them growing. So that is one of the um, challenges that I'm going to 
throw out this morning. Because these people, they don't just want to be physically free, but they also want to be spiritually and mentally free. In order for them to do that is through the word, is to learn the word. And for them to have that is for us to help them, for us to put that Bible in their hand so they can know more, not just what we're telling them, but they can know more about Jesus. And um, it just came to me. There's one lady in there that I met. She said, Sister, can you please pray for me? Because... I've been here for 15 years. I've been here for 11 years, she said. I said, so what did you do? She said, I murdered somebody. But she said to me, you know, while I'm in prison, I came to know the Lord. And I want to, I, I made a vow that when I get out, I want to go all over and tell people what God has done for me while I was in prison. So I prayed with her. And hoping that she will keep that vow. But in order for her to do that, she also has to have knowledge, more knowledge of the word. If she doesn't have the Bible or she doesn't have equipment, how is she going to be able to go and tell somebody? Because we are all here called to go. We may not be able to go physically, which you all have already gone with us. <laughs> Through your prayers, you can go through other ways of support, financial support, however way you can support us, you're going. And one thing I did, I had another dream that I saw somebody interviewing me about the trip. I was telling him how it went. And the last thing I said was, I'm doing this until God tells me something else to do. So that means when I, I said, I'm doing it until Jesus Christ comes back. So that means you all have a long journey <laughs> to come with me until Jesus Christ comes back. So we can equip these people and change their lives and give them the opportunity to change other people's lives. Because that's what we're called to do. So I thank you again for helping us, for praying for us and all the, um, the love that you know, you've outpoured for this mission, and let's just do it again. So. Come on, give her a round of applause, because she was there the day of the earthquake, and the lady that I, I was sitting next to that wrote the thing for me, she had just buried her mother that, that day when the earthquake cracked. So I looked at her, and I said, Mama started the earthquake. <laughs> And she just, <laughs> she just laughed at me. But uh, she was there you know, when it happened. And she had to make some hard choices, but she found her aunt in the rubble. Dead. In the rubble. And they had to make a hard choice. But she said, I'm not leaving my, because they buried their family on this place. They had to get somebody to get the machete and chop her, aunt, her aunt's legs off it only take the upper part. But see, love is not going to leave you. You know, it might leave a part of you, but love is not going to leave you. And that's the reality of what's over there. There's some broken, broken people. Big time. You know, like I said, I, you know, people told me, you ain't going to Haiti. They gave themselves to the devil and yeah, 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 yeah. But I didn't want to listen to none of that because I know the power of the gospel. Because I've been in darkness before, and I lit a light, a candle. And that candle was able to get me through the darkness. And the light of the gospel, what we just did, it might only be a candle light, but that thing is going to illuminate. You know what I mean? Because it says of Jesus when he started his, his ministry that the people who sat in darkness seen a great light. And we're that great light. And you don't understand, like she said, whatever you do, whatever part of it, you were part of every soul that got saved, every person that got delivered, every person who got healed. We went to this church. I told you that church we went up there, we had to drive an hour and 20 minutes, hour and a half, up mountains and everything else. These people wait, waited for us in the sweltering heat. And I ministered to them about the process of God. And we got done. These mothers came and kneeled down on the ground and asked me to pray for them. All the shoulders, because it's so hard. So they're young. They're carrying these big baskets on their head and everything else. And it pushes down on their shoulders. But we prayed for them. And God supernaturally healed them, man. Them ladies went out of there like this. <laughs> they went out of that place. They all got healed. 
You know what I mean? That Jesus just works through you. See, the thing of it is, you got when you say yes to God, see, we say, yes, God, yes, Lord, I give you my life. But when you say an eternal yes to God, then heavens open up. There's a difference from saying yes. And then there's a difference when you say eternally, yes, God. Your way, your will, however you want it done, is totally different. Because now God says, now I got somebody. I got somebody that got my heart. I got somebody that got my mind. Got their mind renewed to what it is. Because you got to remember, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God got a worldview. Do you realize 94% of the world does not live in America? We're only 6 to 10% of all the people that's in the world. There's 7 billion people. We so focus on us that we miss it. He so loved the world. That Haiti's part of the world. And you understand, like you said, we said brought over toothpaste and washcloths and soap and, 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 and femi feminine napkins. Ladies, think about this. What if you didn't have your napkins and Aunt Tilly shows up? And you ain't got nothing to stop Aunt Tilly. That's the reality of their lives. They're in prison. You see, sometimes we take so much for granted about what we have and don't realize what the rest of the world is living like. And that's why I thank God because even though we got opposition, even though stuff was, you know, jumping off that we did not stop. Like Vaughn said, boots on the ground. We were like a military operation going through that. X, hit some of them pictures, X. We were like a military operation going through this, man. And because we had to drive the prisons like an hour away. But we went. People got healed. People got delivered. It was funny. This one lady was in the prison and she goes, and uh, in the last one we was at, I, I, I pull them to the K. They come. And listen, how about the baby? The one girl had a two-day-old baby in jail with her. You talk about heart wrenching. All right. That's the reality of their lives. And their prison's not nice. We went to the men's prison. They got 84 guys in one cell. 84. And that thing is no bigger than this aisle. I, it can't be no more than 12 by 20. 84 people. And I don't know what they do to go to the bathroom and all that other stuff, but, you know, that's what we ministered to. Why? Because Jesus said, go ye therefore into all this world, all the nations, baptizing them, teaching them to observe all the things that I have taught you, and lo, I'm with you always. God was with us, you know, through it all. This is the uh, homeless shelter, right? This is the homeless shelter. Look at that little bit right there. We fed her, and she walked away with her little bit of thing. But if we hadn't showed up, Listen, there's people that are sleeping on the ground. She said she went inside the thing. There's people that are blind just laying there. Nothing. On the concrete. You know? On the concrete. But thanks be to God. You know, because it ain't all gloom and doom. They have seen a great light now. They're not going to give up anymore. There are people that love us, people that care about us. You know, we went in that, oh, yeah, speaking about that lady, yeah, I, I was ministering to the gate, and I was talking. I said, anybody? The lady said to me, she goes, I ain't ready yet. I said, oh, you're not, huh? Okay, Holy Ghost took over. Oh, you ain't ready? I said, listen, I came all the way from here. I said, listen, you done tried drugs. You done tried men. You done tried alcohol. You done tried everything else. You need to try Jesus. I said that he'll never leave you or forsake you. You need to try him, right? She gave her life to the Lord, <laughs> you know, because you know, I ain't going to back up just because you say, I ain't ready yet, okay? Holy Ghost, do your thing, all right? She gave her life to Jesus after that, you know, but it was such an amazing trip. Like I said that, you know, we didn't let nothing stop us, and like I was talking about the unity of the faith, that no matter what happened, we never had one argument between the team because we knew what the mission is. See, once you understand the mission, all the fleshly stuff gets out the way. You know, a lot of times in churches and organizations, stuff you try to do, things that people are fussing and fighting with each other because you don't understand the mission. You don't understand that you didn't deserve the cross, the cross, all right? You didn't deserve what Jesus did, but out of love, he did it for you. So you need to understand, you need to get out the way and let God be God and do what he's calling you to do. Change other people's lives, amen? Because that's what this is all about. There's my man right there, Jeff. He's our driver. How many times I was reading, looked up, all I see was front of a truck. I'm going, Jesus, keep me near the cross. 
you know, because they got, the main road's got big holes in it. It's stuff we take for granted. This guy is weaving, and they got, everything over there is taxis, motorcycles. They're like bees all over there. Right side, left side, all over the place. You know, but this guy navigated through all that stuff, the mountainous roads, big big rocks. Remember how uh, the stones used to fall off the throughway, them big rocks in the, in the throughway? Some of their roads go in the mountain. There's big, I mean, like boulders like this and peas around them and just driving and going over these holes. I said, this guy, he's going to kill us. Uh, go <laughs> and this is the brother I met here. This guy is a uh, U.S. military. He's a sergeant from Boston. He uh, served four years in the, in the U.S. Army. He's a sergeant. He's building, uh, he has, uh, him and his wife have an orphanage. They're building a school right now that's going to start uh, September 9th, next Monday. They're going to teach the kids the Bible, teach the kids English, teach kids life skills, teach kids agriculture. He got the best of the best. This guy don't play around. 38 years old, has more vision than any 38 year old I've ever met in my life. He was talking to me. I was dumbfounded. And plus, he speaks good English. When he first started talking, I said, boy, you, you speak pretty good English here, boy. What you? And then he told me about being in Boston and everything else. But he has such a heart. So he was there. He's moved back. There's other people moving back that love Haiti and want to change it. They're getting involved in the government. They're getting involved in all, all these other things. But they need our help, you know, especially with the word, you know, because we take so much for granted over here. We got the Bible in every translation that you want. The only thing they have is Creole, right? That's the only language they speak. And I had three words, all right? Bonjour means good morning, all right? <laughs> What's the afternoon? The afternoon. Bonsoir. And merci, which means thank you. Oh, uh, yeah. And, 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 and after that, they looking at me crazy, and I'm looking at them crazy, because that's the end of the conversation, okay? Because I don't know what you're saying, and you don't know what I'm saying. Her little nephew, Wilder, he's a good character. He said, oh, I love English. I love English. And then when she wasn't around, I say something to Wilder. He goes, I don't understand. <laughs> so I said, Wilder, I thought you said you love English. <laughs> so we had the good and the bad of that. And these, these are the children. All right? They got 50 backpacks. You see the backpacks? And we f she fed all 50. How this woman does this is remarkable. She had everything. These backpacks were at the hotel. She's putting crayons in for the little kids, pencils, pencil sharpeners, everything. And I'm just looking at her like, how do you do this? You know, she's like on a secret mission by herself with the mission. All right? Go ahead to the next one. Next. Oh, yeah, this is the church. This is the church that they waited, uh, I don't know how long for us to get there. Look how many babies and kids. All right, go ahead to the next one, X. Go ahead. That's the same church. And somehow, some way, we're going to help. This is the guy that's uh, got to school. He said, I'm not going to have it just like any old thing. See the urinals and everything else? This guy's top-notch, man. Top-notch guy. All right? Everything is going to be up to par. Go ahead. Look, there's one room. Keep going. There's another room, a different color for every age. Go ahead. Go ahead. We already seen that. You're going to make some money. This is her uncle's church. Her uncle just passed away um, four months ago, a few months ago. I remember when she left here to go back for her uncle's funeral and stuff. So I ministered at that church. That was the last church. I did three churches in that one day after we went an hour and a half, come back an hour and a half and, you know, whatever. And we ministered at uh, their church, you know, outside church. They love the Lord just like we love the Lord, praise the Lord. You know, they just victim of circumstances or whatever. Go ahead. All right. Now, look, look at the little guy. All right, that's my man right there. These are the kids that are in the village where Tamara's family, they all live together, you know, where grandma used to be, great-great-grandma's house is still there, and the cousins and everybody built on the same land. They bury everybody on the same land. But that little guy, when I used to get, we'd pull up on, uh, on there, because that was our headquarters like, you'd get all the food and everything else, and I'd say, bonsoir. He'd be the first one running over to me, that little guy. He's a funny little guy. Go ahead. And there, this is her aunts. Remember I said boots on the ground, right? These ladies cooked all the food for them 700 people. We're going to that prison where we had to go in and they had to cook the food. They're sitting on the food. All the chicken and all that other stuff is up under there that they're sitting on. Now, they drove 
We had to go an hour or something up and down these mountains, around this, around this, and uh. But they, they were the cooks there. Go ahead, X. That's the prison. That's the last one. Go ahead. Here's the kids again. Go ahead. Here's my man. All right, that's it. Huh? Oh, yeah, you got that baptism video, X? Go ahead, bro. Because that was it. That was the climax. Like I said, it's hot. All right, and we done did, we done did, we done gave out everything and the toothpaste and the washcloths and, 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 and packets. Like I said, this is an amazing woman. She involved everybody, took her nephews and everything. They're sitting on the ground putting all, this, all the stuff together into Ziploc bags. So we gave them to the women, in, uh, you know, individually. Almost 700 of them. We touched this, we touched Haiti like unbelievable. Even, even the COs and them were looking at the items that were in there. They're saying, do you see what these people are giving away? Because they got Brand X. We come over there with Colgate and Scope and, you know, everything else and Crest and all types of deodorant. The girls, they knew the difference. You know, uh-uh, I want that one. You know, they knew the difference. But for them to buy that, they would never, it's in their store. They could never buy it. You talk about extreme poverty. Extreme poverty. Go ahead, X, show that video. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the baptism. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go ahead. Carol, selon la foi, nous baptisons. Put them on the No, no, no. It was just a smear. Okay? Amen. Hallelujah. See, the gospel don't stop. There might be human limitations, but what did Jesus say? Go into all nations, make the disciples, baptizing them. It's all part of the process because water baptism brings the spiritual baptism. We have to follow the ingredients. I always tell people, if you go to the store and you get one of them boxes of Betty Crocker and you want your cake to look what's on that box, you better follow every one of them directions. And don't call Betty Crocker because they're going to say, did you follow the directions? And when you said eggs, oh, I didn't know eggs. Well, you didn't read it. All right? Because that's just us like us. I always say this to you. God has given us 66 books of the way that he thinks. And the problem of it is with us, we don't know the full potential of our lives because we don't read the book. It's just like your car. You buy brand new cars and they give you an instruction manual. How many have ever read that manual? None of us. Okay? Because you don't know the potential of that car. Because you never read the manual until a light comes on. Then you want to figure out what that's all about. But other than that, you ain't reading that thing. But think about your Christian life. God gave you 66 books. You need to spend time with him and allow him to speak to your heart. Yeah, I can preach you from, Revelations to Gen uh, uh, from Genesis to Revelation because I'm a Bible student. Plus, I, I teach Bible college. Yeah, I could do that. But the magnitude that put steel in my backbone is when I spent time with God by myself. None of you are no different to me. You just got to make a choice that I want to be all that God wants me to be. And it doesn't mean that you have to get on a plane and go to Haiti, Jamaica, China, or, or, or whatever. There's enough people right here that need to hear about Jesus Christ. But because I am a disciple of Christ and I know the calling that's on my life and I answered that call, I know what my assignment is. And I love it. No matter how hot it is, no matter how crazy it is, no matter what they say about the government, no matter what they say about it, I serve Almighty God. I don't care about that. He said, he promised me. He would protect me. He promised me. Like he told Joshua, everywhere you put the sole of your feet, I have given you. And no man will ever be able to stand before you. See, I believe that word. That's why I do what I do. Not because I think of all that. I believe this. I believe this. No matter what I do, I believe that. But getting back to this, and we're going to close in a minute. When them girls... Got them items, the sanitary napkins and all that stuff. They put them things on their head. And they started singing this song about marching around Jericho. You know what happened in Jericho, right? When they went around the walls, they started shouting. I mean, this thing was at decibel level. Some of them before 20, 30 deep before they even got theirs. They were stomping and doing their thing. 
But that went on. After we gave out them packs, it changed the whole atmosphere at the gym. Them girls sang for two hours. We're downstairs, way away from where we were, upstairs on the second floor, giving these things away. And you could hear them like they was in the same room with us. And this went on for two hours of them thanking God in their own way that somebody loved them enough. And I told them, when I ministered to them girls, I told them, listen, my purpose was to get on a plane, leave New York, come into this jail for you. Why? Because I love you. But guess what? I know somebody that loves you a whole lot more than I could ever love you. And when I told them my testimony about prison and everything else, they were flying up to the gates. The guys were flying up to the gates. Because I told them, the God that did it for me wants to do it for you. He's no respecter of person. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Amen? Because that's what this is all about. But all of you are involved. And all you need to take a bow and just say thank you. You don't know whether you gave a dollar or a hundred dollars. I don't care about all that. All I care about is that we went and impacted a nation. And God gave us so many connections. Look, he gave me a connection with a two-hour delay sitting next to an old lady who said this was a grandmother. It's like, and in the prison, remember the prison? They had grandmas in prison. I'm looking at Now, you all know you know better. You know, you know. You all know better. You, you should be up in here. Grandmothers, but the, the life that they live. You, you understand what I mean? Grandmothers in jail. In jail. But God is good. I'm telling you, God is good. I mean, there's nothing you could do to stop me from doing because God took me to another level. Like she said, because when we thought that, wow, that was amazing. Every time we came out of jail, every time we came from something that we did, we said, wow, that was amazing. The next day, God took us higher. He says, you think you did something? Wait till tomorrow. All right? And every day God took us higher and higher and higher, man. You know? It's just, just amazing. I'm just so grateful. And as I was saying, I told the, you know, Paul Panessa came and picked me up. And when we hit the traffic circle there uh, in Kingston, I'm looking at uh, Domino's Pizza and something. That the Lord just dropped in my spirit and said, we have two services you know, 600 people tops in between the two services. But we're in China. We got Nick, Nick Akins, just graduated from college. He didn't go get a job. He said, God, what do you want me to do? God said, go to China, Nick. He's in China. We got Tom Crosgrove in there with the adoption agency in India. We got Joe Colucci, who's been in Africa for years. And we now have our own missionary to Haiti, all right? Jamaica, we done built three churches. We're in the process of building the fourth one with 600 people. Do you know there's mega ministries that got 20,000 people that don't do what we do? And I'm not bragging or boasting or anything. I want you to understand the magnitude of love that comes out of this church, that we're not willing to stand back and say, let somebody else do it. No, God, send us. We're going to do it. And you are all part of that. And I pray that you continue to be part of that because you know what? Everybody that got saved, everybody got healed, everybody that got delivered, you're all part of that for your giving, for your praying, and everything else. And one of the things when I hit Kennedy Airport and I went through customs and the guy looked at me, he said, Mr. Mapes, welcome home. And I just smiled. But it made me think. And one day, I'm going to hear, Donald, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. But that's all of you, not just me. All of you one day will hear, welcome home, my good and faithful servant. Because see, what we did was to the least. And Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. You can call them Haitian people and all that. You call them what they want. No matter what part of the earth they live in. But every time we do something like this, we're doing it unto Jesus. You can never forget what we're here for. Never forget as a church what we're called for. Never forget 
how many lives you can impact in your family, in your neighborhood, on your job, in the bank, in the grocery store. We are called to impact this world, church. Amen? That's our job. And we're never going to stop like her. I'm never going to stop. I'm never going to stop until the day I die. You know? Because I just retired and I got refired. If you think that don't fire me up. Because you got to remember, when you look biblically, Joshua and Caleb were the only two that believed God. Caleb was 85 years old, 45 years, when he got the promise. He said, give me mine. He said, I remember what God said 45 years ago. He said, I'm just as strong now as I was then. He said, and give me the hill country where the giants is at. I don't want the cakewalk. He said, give me the hills and give me the giants. And if God be with me, we're going to take care of that. Amen? Because I know God is with us, and wherever we go, we're going to handle our business. Amen? Come on, rise to your feet. Father, we just thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. You are so good, dear God. You are so faithful to your promises, God. You said that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that you are my refuge, my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Father, we're going to trust you until this day is done, whether we expire here or you come back even before that, dear God. But I thank you for the heart, for the leadership of this church, for, for all the things. For our leader, Vaughn Gerald, dear God, who taught us boots on the ground. He said, TBN is great, but we need people on the ground touching lives. So we thank you for the great leadership, dear God. We thank you that you are fulfilling what was in his heart. And as he stands with the crowd of witnesses looking over the banner, saying, well done, King's Fire. Well done. We thank you, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.